Hey guys, it's Mr. Roxy coming to you live from Palm Beach. It is Monday, it is October the 31st. It's the end of the month. Um, oh, it's almost time for Oxy to report. And um, what I thought I would do is check in with Oxy just a little bit because I haven't done so in a long time. Now you might ask me, Mr. Oxy, why are you no longer talking about Oxy? Well, the reason for that is simply that there's not really a lot to talk about. You know, um, if you were making bank on uh, Occidental Petroleum, over the past couple of years or so, you've done pretty good, right? So if you were with me when uh, everybody said sell and run away and you actually um, made a little investment in Occidental Petroleum in those uh, wonderful days when Oxy was trading at around, you know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, eight bucks, 10, you know, whatever, you've done really, really well, right? Uh, but now, you know, it's kind of like um, the party is winding down it's getting close to midnight. You know, at any given time, the cops could arrive. So uh, maybe you want to leave before the cops arrive and just say, I enjoyed the party. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you're still in that position uh, like I am and holding some Oxy and deciding what to do next. So um, let's take a quick look here at Oxy and then uh, I'm going to sort of share with you as I go where I'm at, where my mind's at, what I'm doing. By the way, Oxy is still one of my largest positions in my energy portfolio. Uh, in fact, if you measure my uh, investment, um, the, the capital that I invested is not as great as some of my other energy invest investments, but my return on investment is far greater. So if you say, uh, what's the uh, sort of market value today of Occidental in my portfolio? It is uh, one of my largest holdings. If you look at my cost basis, it's actually not my largest holding, not anymore. So uh, if we look at Occidental, just as a quick snapshot here, you can see it's currently trading at about 73 bucks. I took this uh, screenshot on October 31st, which is today at around 2.30. So I have no idea where it is right now. It's approximately an hour and a half uh, clo getting close to closing time. So it's a little later now, but Oxy is a $68 billion company at the current price. The market cap of a company is the stock price multiplied by the number of shares outstanding. That's how you calculate market cap. It's sitting close to its 52-week high, which was $77.13. So, um, yeah, you know what? If you uh, are in a position where you are wondering what to do next with Occidental Petroleum, uh, it's not going to hurt you if you take a little bit of profit. You don't have to sell the whole thing. You know, just take a little bit of profit. Um, no one gets poor taking profit, right? Its PE ratio is only 7 so uh, it's cheap, not as cheap as Petrobras, which I shared in my previous video has a PE ratio of less than three. But uh, at seven, Oxy is still relatively cheap. Interestingly enough, Oxy is one of the stocks with the highest, one of the energy stocks with the highest short interest percentage, 5.6%. Uh, um, if this is correct, as of right now, you know, five to 6% of the uh, total float outstanding, the number of shares outstanding being short, it means that there's quite a large, large chunk of people who think that Oxy will go down from here rather than up. Of course, there's earnings coming up on deck. We'll talk about that just briefly. Look at the earnings per share. If you look at the graph, of course, a wonderful picture, right? For us, Oxy loans, it's been a fantastic year, uh, mainly thanks to um, Berkshire Hathaway and uh, Warren Buffett taking such a large position in Occidental Petroleum. And that's one of the other reasons why the party is kind of getting close to midnight and uh, drawing to a close here, which, as I said, is not an indication or reason for you to sell and exit Oxy, but just to be aware of the fact that um, and another, you know, 2x, 3x, 5x return from the current stock price of 70 bucks is highly unlikely. It's now become an ordinary stock. It's like me too. And that's one of the reasons why. I don't really make a video on Occidental every few days like I used to do, right? <laughs> the difference be between then and now is at that time, I, I found this thing and I needed to share it with somebody, right? So if you uh, uh, followed along with me, you probably made a whole whack of money. I hope so anyway, if you followed uh, Oxy with me over the past two years or so. But now it's kind of like, eh, you know, not a lot to tell you. How about Tip Ranks? Tip Ranks says it's an outperformance at 10 um, well, of course, it's a 10. I mean, all, all the indicators show you that Oxy is just going up, 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 up. Uh, but don't uh, forget, it's mainly because of Berkshire Hathaway, right? So um, the company did many, many things that were good. They uh, right-sized the balance sheet. They did balance sheet repair. They paid off a huge chunk of debt. Of course, Oxy was generating free cash flow during the um, uh, 
uh, past few quarters off the charts, right? I mean, record cash flows. But the reason for that was not so much the reason for the free cash flow was not so much Oxy's brilliance, but rather the very, very high energy price, which we no longer have. Uh, so be careful, because this is a macro statement, right? They were generating a huge amount of free cash flow when times were good because energy prices were really, really high. And of course, they had cut, cut their costs quite significantly. Now, as a result of hyperinflation and the recessionary climate that we are in, their costs have shot up. And there's nothing that they can do about that because you have to pay the people, especially if you want to retain your best people. And in addition to that, you have to buy materials and supplies like sand and steel, and everything is costing them more. So despite their best efforts, they can no longer control the costs like they did before. So we should expect to see the break-even cost on a per barrel basis, which they never really disclose. It's always a vague number, sort of in the high 30s or around 40. You expect that to creep up. When the costs creep up, the profit is effectively, the margin is getting lower in and if at the same time, the price of WTI, their primary product, has pulled back, which it has, that little sort of delta between the costs and the um, revenue that you can generate shrinks. The only way that you can actually counter that if you're Occidental Petroleum is producing more. But that's kind of like a sort of uh, self-inflicted wound because if you produce more, you're introducing more supply into the market, which might bring the price down again, um, sort of not, not by itself. Oxy is too small in the greater scheme of things. It produces approximately 1% of the uh, consumption that we require on a daily basis globally. So it's not that significant, but it does uh, impact the macro. So there's a lot of moving parts that I'm sharing with you now. But um, what I really want to express with you is despite all these great pictures, the huge uptick in Oxy on the stock price and even tip ranks is number 10 outperform ranking uh, or smart score. Be very, very cautious, right? I don't want you to get hurt. So we've had a good run. Um, don't just sit there expecting it to continue as before. And I'm not being a prophet of doom here. I'm just trying to educate you in terms of sharing information with you, which will help you make a good decision and maybe assist you in your due diligence, which you must do, right? So let's take a look here at what's going on. Tip ranks is saying it's a moderate buy. So there's already a little bit of a, a conflict of interest here, if uh, maybe that's not the right term. But on one hand, they're saying it's a 10 on the smart score. And on the other hand, they're saying it's a moderate buy. Why are they saying it's a moderate buy? Well, seven uh, of the analysts are saying buy and six are saying hold and only one is saying sell. So let's ignore the one outlier which says sell oxy. In fact, I would say sell oxy, but not all of it, just a little bit. Take a little bit of profit, right? But let's look at the other 13 guys. So seven buys and six holds uh, collectively. The 14 analysts have a, an average target uh, price target of $75.79. Uh, it's a little smidge higher than where it is right now. The highest price target is 92. The lowest one's 59. Um, I think the uh, 75 is in play. You know, just kind of looks reasonable to me. Based on the 14 sell side analysts who offered a 12 month price target in the last three months, analysts predict a 5.5% increase from where it is today. I will take it. If it's 5% or 5.5%, it's okay. Uh, would I buy it right now? Uh -uh. I would not buy Occidental at the current price of uh, 70 something, so 73 bucks. What are the hedge funds doing? It's always interesting to, see, interesting to see what the smart money is doing. Now, some of these people have opened up a new position. And for what it's worth, you know, these are not all very large positions. In fact, some of the uh, positions uh, with the Ks behind them, uh, are actually not uh, significant at all. In fact, um, my uh, positions are greater than some of those, but uh, some of them are in the millions. And you'll see some familiar names here, like Ray Dalio. Um, he added 20 million. And uh, right here at the bottom, you can see Prem from Fairfax added 52 million. And of course, right at the bottom, Warren Buffett, who added another 9.3. Billion. So there's one B over here. There's a couple of M's and a couple of K's. So uh, some people are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars and some are investing millions and some are, well, one of them is investing billions, uh, either added or new. So in general, the hedge funds are getting in. So what happens? These guys are late to the party, man. They should have been 
adding these positions or opening these new positions in, uh, you know, maybe mid 2020, not uh, towards the end of 2022. But hey, you know what? Maybe they're in it for the long haul. How about uh, news and, re and reports and ratings, right? So on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see the research team, the street, et cetera, uh, you know, buy, and it's all sort of positive. Uh, so if if all the analysts kind of swing over to my side of the ledger and say you should buy Oxy, uh, I'm automatically be being the contrarian that I am. I'm going like, hey, you know what? If all the analysts, analysts say you must buy Oxy, I might just want to hold my position, trim a little bit, take some profit. Yeah, it's kind of how my mind works, right? It's weird, I know, but hey, uh, so far it's worked, so uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm a I'm a Tough one to follow from that point of view, right? Most people like the herd effect. If all the analysts say buy a particular stock, they're all jumping and buy that stock. And then when it goes down, they go like, how could you? How dare you? You know, like Greta would say. Uh, anyway, my view is the contrarian view. If all the analysts, analysts are saying buy it, I'm going like, hmm, maybe I should trim a little bit, take a little bit of profit and just hold my position. The news headlines, there's another reason why I'm not making many Occidental videos anymore because they, there isn't actually any news. When you look at some of these new news news headlines over here, Oxy Low Carbon Ventures and Natural Resource Partners Limited Partnership enter into a CO2 sequestration agreement. So what? I don't really care. Occidental Petroleum is the most shorted stock in the energy sector. How do Exxon Mobil and Chevron compare? Well, you know, these these are effectively just people writing stories in order to um, either position as clickbait or otherwise to educate you about something or just share something that might be of interest to them. How do Exxon and Chevron compare? How about you just buy XLE, which uh, is you know sort of 20% Exxon, 20% Chevron, that's 40%. And then the next five stocks are all like 4% holdings. You know, So that's another 20%. You're buying the entire energy index and it pays a dividend of about three and a half, four percent 4%. You know, uh, uh, this is just noise. So um, it kind of uh, is interesting to me, but at the same time, if I don't have great news <laughs> to share with you, then I'm not going to make a video about it. So uh, if you are, um, if you if you miss all the Oxy videos that just came out like this, all right, oh, man, things were happening. We were making a lot of money. People were making bank on Oxy, not so much anymore. So it's not that exciting, you know. What happened last quarter? So last quarter, the uh, estimated earnings per share was 293. Oxy blew past that and came in at 316. That was neat, right? What's expected this quarter? Well, the estimated earnings per share is 248. So you can see there's a huge drop, right? From uh, 293 to 248. And what's going to be the reported earnings per share? Now, mm, no, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm uh, not very good at guessing, but I am reasonably good. Well, I suppose that's debatable, but I am sort of, I do have a little bit of skill in finding undervalued stocks. Occidental is no longer an undervalued stock. And that's why it's of less interest to me, despite the fact that it hold, that I hold such a large position of Occidental in my portfolio. Do not be surprised if for uh, the quarter ending September 30th, which is the next one uh, coming up soon, Oxy uh, misses on earnings per share. It's possible. Um, I don't need a surprise, but you know, previously it was easier to predict than what it is now because the uh, revenue has dropped because of the prices of crude and the costs have shot up because of hyperinflation and the recessionary climate that we are operating in. So guys, sorry, man, I just don't know. Number of estimates that have changed. So if we look at the um, momentum here, what we're looking, is, uh, looking at on this slide is the estimate momentum, which measures the changes in analyst manalist sentiment over time. And it might be a future indicator for price movement. So the Q3 consensus earnings per share forecast has decreased over the past week from 254 to 248, which is two and a half percent. But over the past month, it has decreased from 287 to 248, which is a 13.6 percent drop. Of eight analysts, analysts, analysts making quarterly forecasts, two raised and two lowered their forecast. That's a bit of a wash. How about the fiscal year 2022? Well, it decreased over the past week from 10.15, we're talking billions here, to 10.07, which is only 
0.54%, but over the last month, from 11 to 10.15, which is almost 8%. And then you can see at the bottom, just a couple of analysts raised their forecasts and five lowered their forecasts. So it gives you a little bit of an indication as to where Oxy is and where Oxy is going. This is our fearless leader, Vicky Holub, and this is a uh, short presentation on Occidental Petroleum, just to assist you a little bit with your own due diligence that you should do before you uh, jump into any stock. What I'm particularly interested in right now, especially for the people who've been with me for a couple of years, is where are you? with Occidental Petroleum. I have trimmed my position uh, quite substantially, but because of the uh, current stock price in the marketplace, multiplied by the, by the number of shares that I still hold, it remains one of my largest positions. But I've cashed out some, I've taken some Oxy profits and reinvested it into XLE, which was a smart move on my side. And I very seldom make smart moves, but that one worked out. Uh, especially uh, over the last uh, few months or so, while the energy prices were tumbling, it helped to be a little bit more diversified rather than being in a single stock. And I've also donated some of my Occidental holdings to our charitable foundation, which gives me uh, a tax receipt for my donation. You know, so I have been kind of working around the fringes on my Occidental holdings. Um, and of course, I could have a forced exit if uh, Berkshire Hathaway decides to acquire the entire company, which will also create a tax event. You know, so all these things are things that you need to keep in mind when the stock becomes me too, or a little bit meh, whereas previously it was a growth stock and everybody said, run away and hide and whatever you do. What did Jim Cramer say? Sell, 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 right? When I was the lone, uh, the lone voice in the wilderness saying, I think Oxy is going to be okay, you know, but yeah, you should have bought it then, not now. Anyway, that's kind of where my mind's at. Tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to our interactions and I'll be back soon with more. This is Mr. Oxy signing off saying thanks for watching. Bye-bye.